Welcome to Zion, this January 9th, the Epiphany of our Lord. Are there any prayer requests? We have Stu. Any, uh, any? A prayer request, my uh, granddaughter has ACL surgery for two weeks for her wrist Oh, okay. Mike Parker. Okay, uh, we have a guest pianist this morning, and I'll have Alan Chambers introduce her. Good morning. Our pianist today is Elizabeth Smith. Elizabeth lives in Huntington, but is originally from England. She teaches in the music department at Manchester University and has actually been to Zion before uh, several Christmases ago to help us with our music. And uh, in addition to being an accomplished keyboard player, she's also a violinist. She is concertmaster with the Manchester Symphony Orchestra. Oh. So please uh, stop by after the service mm -hmm. and welcome her. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Elizabeth, for being here. You too, Alan. And now we will uh, listen to the prelude. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us comfort ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome, accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us and lead us, 
that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In, Jesus, in Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and the inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is 308.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. O oh God, on this day you revealed your Son to the nations by the leading of a star. Lead us now by faith to know your presence in our lives and bring us at last to the full vision of your glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you the young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And we'll read the psalm responsibly. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son. That the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the hills in righteousness. Let them defend the needy among the people, rescue the poor, and crush the oppressor. May he live as long as the sun and the moon endure from one generation to another. Let him come down like rain upon the mown field, like showers that water the earth. In his time, may the righteous flourish. And let there be an abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. May all kings bow down before him, and all the nations do him service. He has compassion on the lowly and poor and preserves the lives of the needy. The second reading is from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles, for surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. 
In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and shares in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things. So that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now, might, might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. Word of God, word of life. The Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born of the King of the Jews? For we observed his star at his rising and have come to pay homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it, had, it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord. God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable to you, Heavenly Father. Amen. In the church calendar, this is Epiphany Sunday, meaning a divine showing or revelation. We can say that today's gospel is Matthew's Christmas story, just as the shepherds coming to the stable is Luke's Christmas story. These two accounts are quite distinct from each other and each has a different emphasis. Luke puts his stress on Jesus being God's revelation to the poor and the rejected. Matthew, the emphasis, is on the universality of Jesus' mission. He came for all. 
Jew and Gentile alike. You may have wondered what happened to the stable. In Matthew's passage, he talks of the coming to a house where Mary and the baby were. This was sometime after the baby was born. Mary, Joseph, and the baby had traveled to Jerusalem on the eighth day where circumcision was performed on the baby and he was given the name of Jesus. Then they returned to Bethlehem. It may have been that the crowds that were there for registration of the census had moved on and there was space for the little family. That seems logical. We don't really know who these wise men were, if indeed they were wise men or kings or magi. And were there three? Matthew does not say. Did that number evolve from the three gifts given? We don't really know, but we should not dwell on that. The story stands. And it is a familiar story, an important one. The birth of the baby Jesus is important, a message to the waiting world. Yet there is something else of significance here, epiphany. The summoning of the wise men or the kings or the astrologers, depending on your version of the passage, clearly underscores that this is a miraculous time for everybody, Jew and Gentile alike. It was a marker event in the life of the world. Marker events. Our lives are full of them. Part of a Christmas celebration was spent in Goshen with my daughter's family, including my grandkids. We had just greeted one another when my grandson handed me a gift bag and told me I need to open this first. I knew that something was up when I saw that my granddaughter was taking a video. My gift was an ultrasound picture of Haley and Mike's first child, scheduled to arrive in July. I looked at my daughter, Laura, soon to be grandmother for the first time, and she was in tears. Me too. What a gift. What a marker event. Mike told me that they were getting all ready, but I was thinking they don't know anything. When that marker event is in their arms, speaking loudly in a language they have yet to learn, they will begin to understand. They will be great parents because they have great parent models. Marker events are like that. They are moments when circumstance or an act of God redirects our lives. Little nudges that open possibilities Grand moments like graduating from college and taking that first job. Marriage is a big marker event. Certainly the arrival of children are marker events. Doing volunteer service in various parts of the world can be marker events. Doing in a health episode may be a marker event and change the course of a life. Experiencing a three-day Crucia weekend can most certainly be a marker event, followed by the fourth day of walking with Jesus. These events are sprinkled throughout our lives, little and big epiphanies. Maybe we initiated the event, planned it, worked hard to achieve it, and then it happened. Where was God in that? Everywhere. We are familiar with Twelfth Night. For Judaism, Twelfth Night is the Feast of Epiphany, the meaning for Christmas. That was this was the first time that the baby Jesus was revealed to Gentiles, the wise men. Twelfth Night, because it's 12 days after the birth of Jesus, each year Epiphany always occurs on January the 6th, this past Thursday. For many years, Dr. Parks and Paula Adams hosted a 12-night event with spontaneous music, storytelling, good food, and conversation. The Victorian house at the corner of Market and Third Street was filled with rafters of happy folk. 
who, whoever wished to come, each room dedicated to one purpose or another. So much fun in fellowship. A dictionary definition of epiphany is a sudden insight or intuitive understanding of a revealed divine being, a great and spirit-filled discovery. And so we have the story of the three kings, or the wise men, or the astrologers. <laughs> All of these are Gentiles. And so the significance of epiphany is for the Christian church, a rededication of lives to follow Christ. For our purposes, epiphany means shining forth. We use the, wor the word to speak of God showing up in our world. The star that leads the Magi to Bethlehem signals God's epiphany in the child born to Mary. Epiphany always comes in the darkness. No matter the age, it always appears in a time ruled by a kind of King Herod. Yes, we too have our share of King Herod's forces of darkness. His rule of fear surrounds us in so many different ways. We hear what's happening in far away places where villages are shot by soldiers and bombs are planted to prevent peace. But we have our share of fear right here in our own neighborhoods, even among our own families or where we work. Tiny little sharp edges of fear. That fear may show up in ways that we do not treat others as our neighbors, or where small mindedness creates division among people. And sometimes if I wonder if we moonlight a little Herod's in our reaction with others. We are the church. We are the body of Christ and our Lord and Savior has called us to be lights of the world. That commandment has not changed. We are Christ's epiphany in North Manchester. We need to understand that, but more, we need to trust our Lord. An epiphany is not the end of the story. It simply pulls us towards another moment, another marker event when travelers entered Jerusalem at a time when fear stirred the entire city. Soldiers marched and even the hierarchy of religion of the day, murder was on the minds of many. This time, a lamb of the flock had come to Jerusalem and laid himself on the altar in voluntary sacrifice on behalf of the people. A king became the servant to free everyone for giving thanks. The Bethlehem child who escaped the first Herod fell victim to the next. But that death was not the end of the story. This child is our guiding star. Indeed, we share in his glory, even though we must die with him through baptism. His star still leads us to our personal Bethlehem, where we worship him and bring gifts. Then we go home to bring Epiphany's light and the Magi's joy to places where neither has dawned in a while. That sign above our door, we are entering the mission field. That's our call to arms. That's our own Epiphany. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace. Amen.
continue with the Nicene Creed. <clears throat> with the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of wanderers, you sent the Magi from afar to witness the mystery and majesty of your birth. Send us into the world with your will in our hearts and on our lips, merciful God. You created heaven and earth. Through your spirit, send all-encompassing love over the cosmos. Bless the stars that guide our way and the night sky that invites the earth into slumber. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You sent the Magi to follow the star into an uncertain future. May all leaders and peoples seek your face, and especially when paths are not clear, conflicts rage, Tyrants oppress and fears abound. Merciful God. You sent your spirit to dwell with Paul in prison. Send your spirit to those who are imprisoned and enslaved. Give courage and wisdom for building roads that lead to justice and freedom. Merciful God. You sent the Holy Family to seek safety in a new land. Protect all who make similar journeys. Send your guiding spirit to the asylum seekers, refugees, and all who journey toward safety. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your glory is shown to the saints. We give thanks for those who, whose earthly journey has ended and now dwell with you forever. Give us signs of your continual presence until that day when we arise in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for those on our prayer list Earl McKinley, Jack and Shirley Williams, Bonnie Heilman, Dale Neald, Peggy Gilbert, Mara Joy Nelson, Linda Rager Hampton, Mary Crastle, Marie Betton Nickham, Joanne Betcher, Nancy Coble, Betty Hamlin, Betty Lorenz, Owen, Robert and Lois Dowd, Sally Krause, who just had recent ankle surgery, Mary Lou Rohr, Denise's mother, Stu Hawley, Brittany, Lynn's granddaughter, and Mike Parker. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table 
nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to the hungry world. In the name of Christ our life, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty. Let's see. I think some of this is over here. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join in our unending hymn. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the, the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen come to god's table there is a place for you and enough for all
We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthen with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And together we'll say, God who leads us, you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over us, and who calls us by name, bless our going out and our coming in, today and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn is 310. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.